Hi guys, I hope you're doing good. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about this AdRock uh, B450M Steel Legend motherboard. Now this is a micro ATX board and the uh, MSRP is about $100, I think. I'm not sure what it is locally, but given how other items that are $100 translate into here, I'm thinking perhaps $1,700 or maybe $1,600. But either way, that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. What I am here to talk to you about is that at this price, this motherboard is actually better than it should be. I'm not sure if anybody told this board that it's supposed to be $100 or a budget board because it certainly doesn't know it. Now, obviously, it's not going to have a plethora of USB ports and things like that. It's not going to have a fancy VRM. I think, in fact, this is a four-phase VRM or something. But don't quote me on that, I'll just confirm it while I do the review. But I've had this board for a while and I just wasn't getting around to testing it because I only have third generation uh, CPUs and at the time I hadn't flashed this, I couldn't flash it rather because it shipped to me with the original uh, BIOS that didn't support uh, third generation Ryzen. But that said, for such a budget board, this is kind of amazing. And I'll tell you why I say it's amazing. Number one, Usually, or rather, I was not expecting this motherboard to be able to do anything decent in terms of memory overclocking. In fact, if you look in the BIOS, which I'm hoping to have up on screen somewhere, right? If you look at the BIOS, the only profile there is there, in fact, the very fact that there is a profile on such a budget motherboard is quite amazing. But nonetheless, the only profile this is there, I think is for a Corsair 2x16 gigabyte kits at 3200 um, megahertz or mega transactions rather. That's not really impressive considering that the default or the, the, the standard of specification for the Ryzen, in this case the Ryzen 7 to the 800X, is 3200 megatransactions a second. That is the default anyway. But nonetheless, this motherboard was more than capable of that. In fact, the amazing part here is that it actually did 3800, right, with the one to one with the infinity fabric right it did 3800 megatransactions a second for the memory and i'm talking c16 and so forth that is actually amazing for a b450 m board i mean prior to this i was thinking okay you might be able to get away with that on an x470 um maybe even x yeah x470 and obviously x570 and not even any board the high-end boards or the mid-range boards but for $100 or 1700 I think, this just, yeah, it came to the party, just rose to the occasion. In fact, the funny thing is, during the testing, some benchmarks that have been actually been just running, this motherboard ended up being faster than another high-end X570 board. And I'm not talking the cheap X570, I'm talking really high-end, I'm talking over $450. So that's a lot of power for such a little board. Yes, the VRM, as I said, is like four phase. So what I did notice is that under load, uh, particularly in the multi-threaded tests, the performance is a little bit lower than it should be, or at least what I recorded on the other motherboards, by some margin, actually. I'll, I'm not sure how much it is, but it was definitely something that's noticeable. However, in the single-threaded tests, this was just faster. It was faster than all the other boards that I had tested with the same CPU, exact same CPU, exact same memory. Not installed here, but it was the same memory. I'm kind of impressed. I really, really am impressed. For the price point, I don't think I've come across a better motherboard. I mean, you do get your M.2 here. I don't know what this is. This is not labeled M.2, but I suppose it does take M.2 as well. Um, up to 80, 80 millimeters, yes. This does take M.2 and what else? Got the regular audio stuff with the, what are these? Nichicon fine gold capacitors. I think it's uh, ASRock Purity Audio or something like that. Anyway, I'm not interested in any of that. What I am interested in is that this motherboard can give you the performance that previously I thought was reserved for boards costing at least twice as much. So the fact that it can do C16-3800 and overclock the CPU to the normal or rather the maximum frequency of all cores, which is actually 4400 megahertz. That's amazing. Now talking about the overclocking, this, uh, overclocking the CPU, 
I actually realized or found out that on this motherboard particularly, I could do a good 25 to 50 megahertz more than I could on the other X570 boards. I cannot confirm that right now, but from initial testing, I know this CPU tops out at 4400. It always has since I got it. But for some reason, I could do 4450 on this motherboard. Now, obviously this is not Prime 95 stable, okay? However, on the other boards, I generally couldn't do anything above 4400, whether Prime or Cinebench or anything like that. On this board, I could actually pass Cinebench at 4450, right? So that's really interesting to me. I'll investigate it further as and when I get time. In fact, I should have more about this and the overclocking when I actually do the written review, which will be on the website. But for now, I just wanted to let you know that if you are looking for a motherboard at $100 or just a cheap board to use as a backup or whatever it is, definitely consider this uh, Azrock Steel Legend. I mean, it's literally, it's better than it should be. Yes, it doesn't have a postcode LED. There's no power button reset or any of the other things that basically should be on every motherboard or any motherboard, regardless of price. But Barring all of that, all my complaints and all of that, this this is just phenomenal. Um, I just wanted to bring you this before I do the official review and so forth, but I just share my thoughts with you. For $100, this board is excellent. And perhaps it even speaks to my experience with other Ashwalk boards, which I've generally liked, but have sort of relegated to the side for some reason. I don't know, it's just a bias on my behalf or, what, or whatever it may be. But the last few Azure boards I've tried have been really, really phenomenal. And this one just carries on in the same tradition. So yeah, if you are looking for a budget board and you're using 3000 series AMD Ryzen, definitely look at this. You will not be disappointed. And even if you are disappointed, it's a hundred bucks, right? So yeah, go for it. Anyway, I'll check you out in the next time, or rather I'll see you when I actually do the real review. I don't know if I'll have a video in it or not, but I just wanted to bring you this and let you know that this is an amazing board. You should definitely go get it if you're looking for a board that you can get for a hundred bucks or so. Peace.